Uncle Andrew and his study vanished immediately. Then, for a moment, everything became muddled. The next thing Diggory knew was that there was a soft green light coming down on him from above and darkness below. He didn't seem to be standing on anything or, or sitting or lying. Nothing appeared to be touching him. I believe I'm in water, said Diggory, or, or under water. This frightened him for a second, but almost at once he could feel that he was rushing upwards. Then his head suddenly came out into the air and he found himself scrambling ashore, out onto a smoothy, grassy ground at the edge of a pool. As he rose to his feet, he noticed that he was neither dripping nor panting for breath, as anyone would expect after being underwater. His clothes were perfectly dry. He was standing by the edge of a small pool, not more than ten feet from side to side, in a wood. The trees grew close together and were so leafy that he could get no glimpse of the sky. All the light was green light that came through the leaves, but there must have been a very strong sun overhead, for this green daylight was bright and warm. It was the quietest wood you could possibly imagine. There were no birds, no insects, no animals and no wind. You could almost feel the trees growing. The pool he'd just got out of was not the only pool. There were dozens of others, a pool every few yards as far as his eyes could reach. You could almost feel the trees drinking up the water with their roots. The wood was very much alive. When he tried to describe it afterwards, Diggory always said it was a rich place, as rich as plum cake. The strangest thing was that almost before he'd looked about him, Diggory had half forgotten how he'd come there. At any rate, he was certainly not thinking about Polly or Uncle Andrew or even his mother. He was not in the least frightened or excited or curious. If anyone had asked him, where did you come from? He would have probably said, I've always been here. That was what it felt like, as if one had always been in that place and never been bored and nothing had ever happened. As long as, as he said long afterwards, it's not the sort of place where things happen. The trees go on growing, that's all. After Diggory had looked at the wood for a long time, he noticed there was a girl lying on her back at the foot of a tree a few yards away. Her eyes were nearly shut, but not quite, as if she were just between sleeping and waking. So he looked at her for a long time and said nothing. And at last she opened her eyes and looked at him for a long time and she also said nothing. Then she spoke in a dreamy, contented sort of voice. I think I've seen you before, she said. I rather think so too, said Diggory. Have you been here long? Oh, always, said the girl. At least, I don't know, a very long time. So have I, said Diggory. No, you haven't, she said. I've just seen you come out of that pool. Oh, yes, I suppose I did, said Diggory with a puzzled air. I'd forgotten. Then, for quite a long time, neither said any more. Uh, look here, said the girl presently. I wonder, did we ever really meet before? I had a sort of an idea, a sort of picture in my head, of a boy and a girl like us, living somewhere quite different and doing all sorts of things. Perhaps it was only a dream. I've had the same dream, I think, said Diggory, about a boy and a girl living next door and something about crawling among rafters. I remember the girl had a dirty face. Aren't you getting it mixed? In my dream, it was the boy who had the dirty face. I can't remember the boy's face, said Diggory. And then added, hello, what's that? Why, 
It's a guinea pig, said the girl. And it was. A fat guinea pig nosing about in the grass. But round the middle of the guinea pig there ran a tape. And tied onto it by the tape was a bright yellow ring. Look. Look, cried Diggory, the ring. And look, you've got one on your finger and so have I. The girl now sat up, really interested at last. They stared very hard at one another, trying to remember. And then, at exactly the same moment, she shouted out, Mr Ketterly, and he shouted out, Uncle Andrew. And they knew who they were and began to remember the whole story. After a few minutes' hard talking, they'd got it straight. Diggory explained how beastly Uncle Andrew had been. What do we do now? said Polly. Take the guinea pig and go home. <laughs> There's no hurry, said Diggory with a huge yawn. I think there is, said Polly. This place is too quiet. It's so, so dreamy. You're almost asleep. If we once give in to it, we shall just lie down and drowse for ever and ever. It is very nice here, said Diggory. Yes, it is, said Polly, but we've got to get back. She stood up and began to go cautiously towards the guinea pig, but then she changed her mind. We might as well leave the guinea pig, she said. It's perfectly happy here, and your uncle will only do something horrid to it if we take it home. I bet he would, answered Diggory. Look at the way he's treated us. By the way, how do we get back home? Go back into the pool, I expect. They came and stood together at the edge, looking down into the smooth water. It was full of the reflection of the green leafy branches. They made it look very deep. We haven't got any bathing things, said Polly. <laughs> we shan't need them, silly, said Diggory. We're going in with our clothes on. Don't you remember it didn't wet us on the way up? Can you swim? A bit. Can you? Well, not much. I don't think we shall need to swim, said Diggory. We want to go down, don't we? Neither of them much like the idea of jumping into that pool. But neither said so to the other. They took hands and said, one, two, three, go, and jumped. There was a great splash, and of course they closed their eyes, but when they opened them again, they found they were still standing, hand in hand in the green wood, and hardly up to their ankles in water. The pool was apparently only a couple of inches deep. They splashed back onto dry ground. What on earth's gone wrong? said Polly in a frightened voice, but not quite so frightened as you might expect, because it's hard to feel really frightened in that wood. The place is too peaceful. 